Welcome back. This lecture covers upstream surveillance under Section 702 of the FISA Amendments Act. The term upstream simply refers to collection of data as it transits a telecommunications network. Contrast that with PRISM, where data is collected from technology services that run on top of telecom networks. There are certainly upstream programs outside Section 702, but that's the focus for this lecture. There are three types of Section 702 upstream surveillance that I'd like to consider. First, targeted phone surveillance. It's a lot like wiretapping. Second, targeted email surveillance. It appears to be what the FISA Court and the Privacy and Civil Liberties Oversight Board have focused on when trying to understand Section 702 Internet upstream surveillance. Last, bulk surveillance. There's remarkably little clarity on these practices, and I'm going to do my best with what's been reported and what's leaked. So, let's begin with targeted phone surveillance. The NSA provides a Section 702 directive to a telecom, listing certain phone numbers or similar criteria. Recall that the phone numbers have to belong to non-U.S. persons outside the United States. Then, whenever a call to or from that number is routed through the United States, the telecom passes along voice content. This is all very similar to how wiretap orders get executed. To be clear, the Section 702 Upstream Authority applies when one end of the call is in the United States. When both ends are outside the United States, the NSA seems to use the same technology, but it relies on its transit authority instead. All right, so that's it for targeted phone surveillance. Really pretty straightforward. Now let's turn to targeted email surveillance. I'm making a somewhat artificial distinction between this type of upstream surveillance and the bulk internet surveillance I'm going to get to shortly. But again, there's a certain targeted email context in which the FISC and the PCLOB have thought about upstream surveillance. And so I'd like to emphasize that mode of thinking. As I hope you recall from the NSA's email metadata program, the agency has been scooping up email traffic from devices on the commercial internet backbone. Much of that traffic used to not be encrypted. And so, under Section 702 authority, the NSA would sift through the email traffic, looking for messages to, from, or even about a target. That much has been confirmed by some declassified FISC documents. It's also been confirmed by a leaked slide, with apologies for the poor quality image. Here, an analyst has targeted a Yahoo email address in the Unified Targeting Tool. They've had a PRISM directive issued to Yahoo, but they're also doing upstream surveillance. If an email to, from, or mentioning that address flows over the domestic internet backbone, the NSA will collect it. Let me give a little more technical detail. Suppose this SMTP session zipped by an NSA device. And suppose the NSA was targeting Alice using her email address. The NSA's device would spot Alice's email address in real time. It would then save the entire email transaction, including message content. Let me give another example. Here, Bob and Charlie are emailing. The message includes Alice's email address in the body, but she's not the sender or the recipient. The NSA would still detect that, and it would save the entire email transaction. That's called about targeting, and the FISC has allowed it for Section 702 upstream surveillance. In fact, the NSA doesn't just go searching through email messages. It looks through all sorts of internet traffic for a match. Now, this process of upstream collection 
comes with a major technical problem. Electronic messages are often bundled. For efficiency, servers often communicate many messages in a single transaction. And who knows what sorts of traffic the agency might stumble across with its about targeting. So there's quite a lot of incidental collection of totally unrelated messages. And some of those messages are purely domestic, entitled to full Fourth Amendment protection. These problems might seem kind of obvious to engineers, but the NSA didn't clue in the FISC until 2011. Needless to say, the FISC was very displeased, and it concluded that this sort of incidental collection of unrelated and purely domestic emails violated the Fourth Amendment. So the agency scrambled to develop a very stringent minimization process for these sorts of messages. So there's a quick sketch of targeted email surveillance, about targeting, and the problems posed by bundled messages. Now on to the last type of Section 702 upstream collection, which is a sort of bulk surveillance. Before getting into the substance, I want to be sure to note that these practices are very poorly understood. They've been an area of lesser focus in media coverage, as well as in efforts at reforming surveillance authorities. What's more, Understanding upstream surveillance requires an unusual degree of technical background. Unfortunately, that's mostly been lacking within government oversight bodies. The best source I can recommend on upstream surveillance is a report prepared by the P-Club. But that document has some glaring shortcomings, in part because there wasn't a single computer scientist involved. So, with those caveats, let me give my best attempt at synthesizing leaks and reports to explain Section 702 bulk upstream surveillance. There's no doubt that there's some very high volume collection occurring under the NSA's Section 702 upstream authority. In this slide, the agency says as much. It's collecting a lot of upstream data from popular online services, and certainly not just email. Here, the NSA is emphasizing just how much international telecommunications volume falls within Section 702. Some connections carry over 500 gigabits per second. This slide depicts the volume of Section 702 upstream eligible traffic destined for Pakistan. As I hope you can make out, the NSA has noted hundreds of megabits per second in certain regions. This related slide shows top Pakistani domains seen by Fairview systems. Fairview, to explain, appears to be upstream collection associated with AT&T. It relies on both Section 702 and Transit Authority. A similar pair of slides shows traffic volume to North Korea, as well as top North Korean domains. Here's one more map slide showing a large volume of Section 702 traffic involving Iran. The final image I'd like to flag is a readout of Fairview collection. There's quite a lot. The data appears to mostly relate to phone calls. That's DNR in intelligence lingo. And more specifically, mobile phone calls. Internet traffic, that's DNI, seems to be a minority. The units of measure aren't clear here, though, so the comparison may not be quite right. Also, it's not apparent how much of this collection is under Section 702 and how much of this collection is under Transit Authority. So, let me recap. This much is certain. The NSA could collect a massive amount of phone and internet content inside the United States under Section 702 upstream. What's uncertain is whether the NSA does have massive Section 702 upstream collection, and if it does, 
what exactly is collected, and how long it's kept. Now, you might be wondering, what would be the legal basis for massive Section 702 collection? That isn't clear either. My best guess is drawn from a leaked NSA Inspector General report and Section 702 FISC documents. It appears that the NSA argued and the FISC accepted a redefinition of what a communications facility is for targeting purposes. Traditionally, a targeted facility has been something like a phone number or an email address. That's how the other types of upstream surveillance were targeted. With this redefinition, a facility might be an entire international network connection point, such as the end of a transatlantic cable. That would encompass massive amounts of traffic, and it would be consistent with the slides that I emphasized. So, the punchline is, Section 702 appears to allow bulk surveillance of one-end foreign internet traffic. That's internet traffic with one end inside the United States and one end outside the United States. How much of that surveillance the NSA is doing is very unclear. As an aside, in a line of research with colleagues at Princeton University, we've tried to quantify the privacy impact of Section 702 Upstream Surveillance Authority. We found that if the authority is as broad as it might be, it would cover a lot of online activity by ordinary Americans. Everything from reading the news to checking baseball scores. So, there's a rough overview of bulk surveillance under Section 702 Upstream Authority. It's extraordinarily ambiguous and potentially has extraordinary privacy implications. Since that was a lot of nuanced material, I'd like to provide another recap by comparing Section 702 Upstream to the PRISM program. Once again, I'm going to take advantage of the NSA's own artistic talent. The two types of surveillance under Section 702 of the FISA Amendments Act are Upstream and PRISM. Upstream is collection of data from access points on domestic telecommunications backbones. PRISM is targeted collection of data from online services. Here's a comparison table that the NSA put together. PRISM covers specific U.S. online services. Upstream covers anything that wanders into the U.S. from anywhere in the world. PRISM covers both stored communications held by online services and prospective communications using those services. Upstream only allows for prospective surveillance as data flows across domestic backbones. There may also be some temporary retention period. PRISM, as I hope you recall, allowed for targeting communications to or from specific individuals. Upstream is broader. It also allows collecting communications that just mention a target. And if the bulk theory of upstream is right, it might be even broader than that. The last point I'd like to emphasize relates to the structure of the programs. Recall that PRISM relied on the FBI as an intermediary for serving Section 702 directives and for receiving data. Under upstream, the NSA works directly with major telecommunications services. So, that brings to a close the material on Section 702 surveillance programs. The next lecture looks at some of the NSA's greatest hits under Executive Order 12333.